Hey guys, me again. Okay, today we're gonna talk about the G words. So glucose and glycogen and insulin and glucagon and all the G words that are gonna be all cray cray. All right, here we go. So we're gonna break these down into our root words. Okay, so to lice means you're going to break things down. Genesis is creating new things. Neo is new. Gluco with a U is glucose, which is a single six carbon sugar. Glyco with a Y is how we store, okay? And so um, if we have, again, the glucose is a six carbon sugar, we have gluconeogenesis. So this literally makes to create genesis, neo is new, glucose with a U, okay? The only exception is when you have glycolysis, it's breaking down glucose because to lice and then this one. But this one you kind of should know anyway because of talking about metabolism. So other than that, whenever you see the U, that's talking about glucose. So then when we talk about glycogen with a Y, this is a polysaccharide made up with several glucose molecules. So I think of the glucose as a brick and glycogen kind of as like the house. And so we're building a house out of bricks in a way to store it, okay? So we have glycogenesis, which is creating new glycogen. We have glycogenolysis, which is breaking uh, glycogen. So again, I see a Y, so that's glycogen and lysis. Glycogen genesis, okay? So just kind of keep those in mind. And then um, insulin, you know, is a hormone that kicks into response to the fed state. So this is why diabetics have to take it after they eat or right when they're eating, okay? Because we're going to be dealing with the sugar, okay, that is that we're eating. Then glucagon, that's the hormone that kicks in in response to starvation state. So you can think of glucose is gone, the glucose is gone, okay? So insulin and glucagon are exactly opposite. So insulin is after you eat a meal, where glucagon is when you're hungry, okay? You have the fed state with insulin, where the starvation state, okay? So again, with insulin, you just ate, so you're gonna break down the glucose, which is triggering glycolysis, breaking down glucose. You just ate, so the excess glucose is stored away, it's gonna trigger uh, glycogenesis. Okay, glyco with the Y, that's how we're storing it. Genesis is to create. So we're creating new storage, okay, of the glycogen. Then blood glucose levels will go down further, but if the blood glucose levels continue to fall below threshold, this will further inhibit the insulin. That's an FYI. All right, so again, glucagon. This happens when you're hungry and your starvation state. You're going to build new glucose. So you're breaking down fats and the glycogen to create energy and help you uh, to be able to sustain yourself. You're starving and there is no glucose. So you're going to be tr triggering gluconeogenesis, which is making new glucose molecules. All right, also you're starving, there's no glucose, you're triggering that glucogenolysis, which is to break down that glycogen stores into the sugar uh, glucoses. Okay, then also your blood glucose level will increase to help you sustain, but if it rises above the threshold, it'll inhibit the glucagon and stop it. Okay, so like I said, they're inverse, all right? So here's a nice little schematic um, where insulin is going to uh, stimulate fatty acid synthesis when we have the extra glucose, and the insulin is going to stimulate uh, triglycerides, okay? So first, you're going to be eating a meal, increasing the blood glucose levels to higher than the normal homeostatic set point. It's going to tell the pancreas to release insulin into the bloodstream. Then the liver is going to begin taking up the excess glucose and store it as glycogen. And then this causes the blood glucose levels to drop back to normal, which is good, okay? And then remember, the glucose is gone, the glucose is gone. This is the action of glucagon, where a missing meal brings the glucose levels down to below the normal set point. And this is gonna cause the pancreas to secrete glucagon into the bloodstream. And then this is gonna signal the liver to um, begin converting the stored glycogen into glucose. And then this is going to raise the normal blood glucose back to normal. So again, we're always trying to get this homeostatic level of uh, sugar okay so hopefully this was helpful for you and yeah just look for the use for glucose except for in glyc glyc uh, ah, glycolysis sorry about that see yes it's crazy all these g words too and then the y's are for glycogen stores okay i hope this is helpful and we'll talk to you soon bye